Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lisa Alvarado. right a latina on the stage that is right it is so good to be here you guys what do you think of this jacket thank you i got it for the show um i was at the airport and this woman was like can you watch my bag <laughs> and i was like well what size are you that's so i dressed up you guys look really nice especially you sir thanks for uh you know, wearing a baseball cap. That's like a tuxedo here in Utah. That's amazing. I pulled up, I was looking for parking. There's no valet parking here either, which is okay with me because I hardly ever valet park my car. You know why? I don't trust those guys. You never know how they're gonna treat your kids, <laughs> right? I love ethnic diversity, you guys. I mean, like, look around the room. So many different kinds of beige. I mean, just <laughs> every shade. A little bit of pink if you get sunburnt. I love it. I live in LA right now, and it's so ethnically, every different ethnic diversity there. Anywhere you go, you see Latino people, then like other kinds of Mexicans. <laughs> Me and Love to see interracial couples as well, because that means that we're loving one another. We're getting past our differences. Plus they have beautiful children, don't they? Gorgeous. My new neighbor, she's an Asian woman married to a Latino guy, and they have the cutest little black baby. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm like. Hey, you guys. I'm Venus Monique from the hit crime drama Vindication. And you guys should definitely make sure you're catching the Maurice Brown show on Roku TV. Yeah! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Maurice Brown Show. That was Lisa Alvarado talking about how Asians and Latinas can get together and have a guy like me. That's pretty wild, isn't it? Well, hey, how's it going, everybody? It's good to see you breaking down the four walls. I know what that's like. I have a Brazilian wife, and all of our kids are white. So, I mean, I get it. I, I'm just kidding. So, let's start the show at... Let's stay local. I'm in Austin, Texas. Let's bring down a fellow Texan, Kim Curley. What's up? Oh, hey, you're in Austin, Texas? Yeah, I'm in Austin. I've been in Austin for the past month. Uh, you're right down the road, man. You're in San Antonio, right? Yeah. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. How's the comedy been going in uh, uh, San Antonio lately? Uh, pretty good. We got some comedy clubs going, um, but I just I just went up to Dallas to do comedy, so that was that was fun. But yeah, everything's good. The one people thing are I, people yeah, are laughing. Like it. just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a thing, Kim. The, I've noticed that they do a lot of outdoor comedy. It's so hot, and yeah. they're doing comedy outside. I don't get that. Is that normal? Yeah, I did an outdoor show not too long ago, and it's hard. That's that's a hard gig. You know, oh, when you have a room in the containment and the laughter, that kind of means something, the vibration, the laughter. When you're outside, it just kind of goes. Oh, I know. <laughs> I don't I don't know if they are aware of that or if they even care. They just seem to love it. Anyway, it's all good. I guess I got to get used to it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and we're in Texas. We're going to stay fairly local. Let's go down to Oklahoma and bring out our good buddy, Michelle Van Dusen. What's up, Michelle? How are you? Hey, I was just wondering, like, how hot is it? Because I know the temperature just changed here the, uh, the last two days, thankfully. It's not that our- hot now. I think it's only, get this, only, it's only 97 today. Whew. Well, our AC went out. Yeah. So that was a tough 
two days. Like I had a personal sauna. I mean, people spend thousands for personal saunas. Yeah. Oh, wait, we did spend thousands. Okay. So, um, <laughs> better. Okay, well, yeah, we got a, we got a cool spell going on here in Austin right now, upper nineties. It's so 90s. such a relief. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's go out to the windy city where I'm sure it's not quite as hot and visit with our good buddy, Dave Ebert. What's up, Dave? How are you, buddy? Hey, it's good to see everybody. I'm glad to be here. Um, yeah, I was in San Antonio not too long ago, and uh, every time I ordered my apple pie for dessert, they would forget the ice cream scoop. So finally, I had to yell at the waiter, remember the Alamode. <laughs> remember the Alamode. That was a good one, Dave. I like that. Let me, I got to write that one. The Alamode. Okay. Good stuff, Dave. I love it. Let's uh, let's go out to the Bay Area where I'm sure it's not as hot, but very cool out there in the Bay Area in California. Shell T. What's up, Shell? How are you? I am great. How are you guys doing? I'm super excited. What's, yes. the, what's, the, what's the temperatures like out there in, in the uh, Um, We're skating. It depends on where you are. The Bay Area is really tricky. You can start off in like the San Francisco, uh, Sacramento area and be like 90 to 104 and then 30 minutes, 40 minutes later, be in Berkeley and need a jacket and be free. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it just depends yeah. on where you are. So. Yeah. It, um, it does. It does. Yeah. Like the, 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 the San Francisco area in particular, I would imagine. San Francisco is always 70 degrees. I'm going to tell you that right now. 70 degrees. And if it hits 85, we literally lose our minds. Like, oh, it's just time for shorts and tank tops. It's, it's you, so cracking. No, no wonder you guys are so spoiled rotten out there. I get it now. I totally get it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's uh, let's go back out to my old stomping grounds to Virginia and bring out my good buddy, Don Davis Womack. What's up, Don? How are you? What is up? Good to be here, everyone. And I just want to say, speaking of hot, yeah. all I want to do is rock that jacket like Lisa Alvarado. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Lisa's got it going on. No question. She's Hashtag got the jacket, goals. everything going on. I talking know. about how it is with the, you know, the the, the mixed marriages, you know, nothing like great. a Latina and an Asian getting together and producing a black baby. I get it. I totally get that stuff. Um, uh, Don, do what? Too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how about it? How about I it? Do. You know? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, your, your son played in the NFL for the Carolina Panthers and the New Orleans Saints, right? That's right. And he's a biracial, beautiful baby himself. A big one. And a, a beautiful one. Yes, <laughs> yes, he is. And a great ball player. You're very modest. You don't mention him very much. Great ball player. Thank um, you. Let's go out to Tennessee and bring out our good buddy, Christy Condor. What's up, Christy? How are you? Ooh, uh, everything's good. I only have a San Francisco sweatshirt because I went in July. You know, you go in July. You know, that's yeah. the only reason you buy a San Francisco sweatshirt. You go, because oh, wow. you thought it would be warm. Hey, Christy, what are the temps like in Tennessee? It's really actually nice. It's like 86. Whoa. You know? Wow. And that's perfect. My daughter is actually in upstate uh, Washington in Seattle. Okay. okay. And she said she's doing Shakespeare there. And their uh, staff notes, tech notes for this week said heat advisory. It'll be up to 80. Oh. <laughs> heat advisory. Oh, my gosh. And she's like, hey. I, she's, you know, we she grew up in Houston. So she's like, this is winter for her. <laughs> Hey, Kim. Hey, Kim, tell her that is straight comedy here in Texas. <laughs> well, exactly. it gets up to 80, that, that is, I, in, I used to live in the Seattle area. When it gets up to 82, everybody's worried about their straight grass. comedy. Oh, the grass is going to dry no out and die. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I grew up in Houston. I didn't know what humidity was. I just thought that was summer. You know, I, I, I didn't know there was you didn't have sticky and hot. I thought that was just weather. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know. I didn't know that you couldn't have that. Crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah. Look, guys, we're going to start in Acts chapter 5. We're going to finish up in Acts chapter 5 and pick it up in verse 22. Dave, be on standby if you need to play backup quarterback again. Uh, but we are going to go verses 22 through 26. And before we get started, uh, Christy, how about opening us up in prayer, Christy? Absolutely. 
Heavenly Father, God, we uh, just honor you for who you are, for that you are the maker and designer of our hearts. And Lord, I just thank you for that. I thank you that we can honor you and come to you and look at your word together and just bless this time. Bless each of these uh, friends that have come on to look at your word together. And may we glorify you in all we do. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 In Jesus Christ's name. And uh, Dave, so I'm going to read 22 through 26, Acts chapter 5. We've been talking about the power of the Holy Spirit, the lack of power we see in our churches today, and then also the deception of our so-called leaders in some cases. We have some great leaders out there, but we do have some charlatans as well. It's a matter of weeding it out and figuring who is who is it? Who are they? And a lot of them are right in front of us and 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 they're very uh, recognizable names, but Dave, we're not gonna we're not gonna put anybody out there, Dave. We're not gonna do that today. We're gonna give we're gonna give that a break. However, that's just the background of what we've been discussing. So let's go to Acts chapter five. I'm in the NLT version, and uh, you guys may be uh, doing your KJV, NKJV, or um, ESV, and all that type stuff. You, you know, you, 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 you guys know what I mean. Anyway, so here we go. Acts chapter 5, verses 22 through 26, and it reads, But when the temple guards went to the jail, the men were gone. So they returned to the council and reported the jail was securely locked with the guards standing outside. But when we opened the gates, no one was there. And as we read prior to this, angels had unlocked the gate and uh, let Peter and John out. Verse 24, when the captain of the temple guard and the leading priests heard this, they were perplexed, wondering where it would all end. Then someone arrived with startling news. The men you put in jail are standing in the temple teaching the people. The captain went with his temple guards and arrested the apostles, but without violence, for they were afraid the people would stone them. Which, which tells you right there that they, they were understanding of the fact that they were, they were moving with power. But it seems that throughout the book of Acts, that not once, it seems to me, somebody help me out, not once has it occurred to these priests that the apostles have real power. Okay, mm. you know, it's like you're looking at this, you ever get the impression they never real, I like it's like they're completely blind to the fact that Hey, yo, dude, did you just see that? They, they never had that reaction. And the stuff was amazing, what was happening. But they never had that reaction. And I, I find that kind of odd. Like the average person would be like, whoa, anybody, anybody in their right mind would be like, gee, that never, that was never the response mm. from these men. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, how in the world <laughs> could that be that you could be totally unfazed, totally unfazed now by real power? I'd love for one of you guys. I have an answer to that, but I'd love to know what you guys think about that. Go back to absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. People, they didn't want to give up their power. They didn't want to mm -hmm. give up their okay. position. They were in control. And that is a very powerful, heady, heady thing. So, yeah, yeah. I don't want to give up my control. My whole life is going to have to change. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Right. 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 Yeah. It's uh, kind of like when people are, their agenda is more important than what's actually in front of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So what they they were seeing, they were trying to prove a point so they couldn't focus on anything else except for what their agenda was. Mm -hmm. And they're yeah, responding, they're responding yeah. out of fear by arresting. That's a fear response. I don't want to deal with this. I'm going to arrest them and take this away so I don't have to deal with it. That to me, that's right. a fearful response. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. if they they acknowledge someone else has greater power than they do, then they're not as powerful in their mind. Yeah. Well, sure, sure. Yeah. And, and and I think that, and I, I'm sure you guys might agree, but I'm going to throw it out. I think it goes back to what was talked about in Romans, where you can get so far away from God that God will turn you over to yes. a reprobate mind. Yes, yeah. that's right. <laughs> like you, you're so you, your heart has gotten so hard, and you are so far away from the truth. Willingly, by the way, on your own accord, you decided to do that. That you can't see God anymore. That's right. 
Yeah. You, you, you can't see it. You have no ability to even recognize a real act of God, which is scary. Because, mm-hmm. you know, on a, on a much you know smaller level, we can all get into that mode of comfort in our lives and just kind of start cruising along and thinking that, you know, hey, it's all good. I, you know, I, however you're living your life and you're not walking in power, then you start getting duller and weaker. And and then to the point where it's like you go, how did I get way over here? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, how did I get here? You know, in our everyday lives, like we can mean well, but the devil is so cunning and so subtle. If he could just get a moment, of, if I could just get a moment of your time, please, man. Mm-hmm. Good sir, if I may. <laughs> and then you start looking at the thing and then you start be- becoming very, very interested subtly. Mm -hmm. over time and that thing morphs itself into a monster Mm -hmm. and 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 you're done i mean it's like you're not done done because you know christ there is a way back but sometimes people don't make it back Mm -hmm. and you start we we operate we operate on on mind body spirit Mm -hmm. at this dimensions level that we're at so I always thought about that. That reprobate mind scares the living daylights out of me because I can't believe, you know, when God turns his back, that's got to be a lonely a thing. But people aren't operating. To me, these people are not operating who God gives over to reprobate mind. That means that that's been cut off and they're only operating on mind and body and there's no spiritual component to existence. And and so what is that? What that tells me is that so many people aren't really turning to God and don't have a spiritual core. You know, there's nothing there. To begin with, it's or it's very, very weak. It's like, yeah, I think about it right now and then, but it's it's just I just can't imagine. I can't imagine living that way without well, a spiritual and, and, and peace. Kim, Kim, you you hit it right on the head. It's a very scary thing when you think about it. Like God gets to a point where he's like, I'm done with you. I, I'm I'm done with you. How do people even survive? I think they would, they would shrivel up and die. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I can't imagine living like that again. <laughs> I mean, so we were, we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So yeah. we, we were born in a life that was separate from our relationship with God. And so um, being in that place where I heard the Holy Spirit all my life, I just first didn't recognize that's what it was. And then when I recognized that's what it was, I ignored it because I still wanted to do what I wanted to do. And then as I became closer in my relationship with God and closer in my walk with God, that's yeah. when the voice was undeniable. And, and right. then in the relationship, it was a choice to then follow that voice. But I yeah. do remember what it was like not having that relationship, not having that peace, not having that, um, that the obedience, which becomes a beautiful thing to the voice of God, because then it leads you into the purpose and the places where you're supposed to go. So I, I agree. I just thank God that I'm not there anymore. And I do not want to go back to that space ever again. No, no, you don't want to go back to that space. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll tell you right now, it's all about relationship. That's the beautiful thing about the salvation uh, in Christ is yeah. it's, it's all about the relationship because you want to have a healthy balance because as much as you want to do the right thing, then you could still end up in that place where these priests are, which is legalism. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, okay, so now so where, was gone- there, where was their disconnect? Because they were they were thinking they were protecting the law, right? Yeah. And I want to hear what Michelle thinks about this one because she, she, knows, she, knows, she studied this. So, <laughs> but she, you got these, these people that are following what they think to be is the law. They're doing yeah. what they think is best for really for God in a way. Right, right. And yet they're missing the point. And that to me rep is, is scary because it's, you are in, you are in the faith and yet you're missing it, which is really, Michelle, I, you've looked at this. What do you think? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, and, great and, question. <laughs> what, shall we, we can look at Paul. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that's exactly yeah. what he 
thought. He didn't feel like he was doing anything wrong. He thought that he was following the teaching. He was doing what was supposed to be done. But then we take it a step further back and we hear Jesus Christ say, forgive them for they know not what they do. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in that space, but once he got that moment with Jesus and he got that, he was blinded from everything else and then able to just see who Christ was, that's where the shift came. And I think that's where we miss it with people. Um, as Christians, we're the epistles read by men. So they should be seeing us and deciding, you know what? There is something better than this. There is something better than life. Maybe, maybe looking at this example, let me find out what they're doing, how they're getting there in, in that place. And and I think that that that's what I think about because I, I can relate with Paul. I I I was a fool back in the day. Mm -hmm. Did all kind of crazy stuff. I sold yes. drugs, I ran with a gang, I did all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, man. The best of them. I created some of the cuss words. I did all kinds of <laughs> <laughs> but now well, in this stage, I get a chance for people to see the transformation mm. and that gives people hope. Well, you know what, Shelty, I, look, I'm with you I, and I, you guys know I've said this on this show before. I, I had a huge marijuana problem when I when I was in my 20s, mm. huge marijuana problem. I mean, it was it was so bad. And, <laughs> you know, it took a friend of mine that I grew up with that accepted Christ at a young age. I mean, you don't see a lot of really sold out. Well, when I was growing up anyway, I didn't see a lot of sold out Christians that were like 15, 16 years old. I didn't see it very often. And he was my best friend. And, and he was the one that talked me into salvation. Mm. You yeah. know, um. I, I mean, I, I thought it was a joke. I thought Christianity, <laughs> I thought... <laughs> I just thought people in church were a just a scream for me. They were funny. And, and but I didn't know who Christ was. Mm -hmm. I needed to know who Christ was. And he, he brought him to me. But Michelle, you did not get a chance to respond <laughs> as Christy <laughs> wanted you to. Go oh, ahead. Very good. You know what? That's oh, no, that was good, Michelle. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Shell. That was awesome. Sorry, my government name is Michelle. That totally threw me off. No, I, 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 I was like, I might not have been, I might not have said, but you, I mean, hey, either one of you. <laughs> Listen, Shelty, I'm just going to say, when I became a Christian, it scared the L out of me. That's why I, my name's spelled one L. Just to that out there. <laughs> no, I, I think it goes. I think it goes back to what Kim said at the beginning. It was about the power corrupting. Yeah. You know, um, like when Pharaoh had all that power, he thought he was a God because, you know, power, he's thinking he's God. And so when he's confronted with God, but he's like, no, but I'm God. And and he kept hardening his heart, you know, and, he, and the more God showed up, the more he's like, uh-uh, I'm not, I'm not accepting that. And so it's the same thing here. You know, the high priest, they, they thought, oh, we took care of it. We, Jesus died on the cross. It's all good. It's all dead and done. We're, we're done with this. And then it popped up again and popped up again and it keeps popping up. And so when it gets to this point of, wait, the guys are out, but the prison is still secure. Like we've secured everything. Everybody's still in their yeah. spots, but our guys aren't. What? And they're like, uh, okay, if we do something here now, we're going to be the ones that are going to get killed. So mm, it, yeah. it still comes back to the, you know, they have to confront and, and face, they got to face who they are in God. And right now they're opposing him. And every time you oppose him, it gets worse and worse and worse. And it, it also goes back to the, the fear. And, and I, I mean, I know Kim, you're a counselor, so you understand the whole mind section and correct me if I'm wrong, but if, if you're spending your time and you're spinning your wheels in your mind and you just keep going over the same thing and you you can end up start reacting out of all this emotion and you mm -hmm. have no wisdom at that point, like it's gone. And, and that's what I, I think that they're doing here is they just keep going with, oh, yeah, we see we see the truth, but mm, we're not accepting. It's not our truth. Right. And, and I think that's right. kind of how society is right now with. Oh yeah, we, we see the truth, you know, we, we hear what you're saying, but that's not my truth. I'm going to be me, 
you know, you do you, boo. You know, like um, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I know I shouldn't, I shouldn't have premarital sex. It's okay. You do you, boo. Oh right. yeah. Oh, right. oh. <laughs> should I be sleeping with this woman? No, no. It's okay. You do you, boo. Like, yeah, like that's, that's the that's kind it. of. That's where we're at, I think, in society yeah. overall. And I think they're at the same spot. Like, here's the truth. Here's the standard. What's your reaction going to be to it? Are you going to take right. the emotional reaction? Are you going to take a fearful reaction? Or are you going to be like, Whew, yeah, that's the truth. And I need to change. Because the truth doesn't change. Mm -hmm. It never changes. It, it, we have it, to change. We, yes. And, and, I, and I think the, the biggest problem in my opinion that that forces us into the area that the priests were in were in is legalism mm -hmm. like like you were saying christy it's like you mean well like your heart is in the right place but you get so focused on you know legalistic issues you forget about relationship Mm -hmm. well, that's that's even you know les miserables if you study les miserables you know you have javert who is all about the law and Jean Valjean, who is all about mm -hmm. mercy and grace. And there's this, that's the whole book is like that. It's this constant back and forth between, but it's the law, it's the rule, it's the, you know, they needed to be in jail. They're going to, they should be in jail. They left jail. They weren't supposed to leave jail, you know? And so now we got to go get them and put them back in jail, but they missed what was happening at the time. It's, and I think we all struggle with that. What's right mm -hmm. and what's, grace what's you know do you steal for bread <laughs> you know it's it's to steal for hunger i mean that's that cost I, but i think that's human life you know it's it's where it's this constant struggle and that's why we need god because yeah. god mm -hmm. is all of that yeah of and it you know made me think of is it you know is it this or is it that is it judgment or is it compassion there right. it is that's right Don. you know yeah because we all, none of us are perfect, not even one. That's why we all need Jesus. So that's like, Shelty, thank you so much for sharing your testimony on the show. That's yeah. really amazing. And you, Maurice, too. I mean, all of us, we have some choices that we don't particularly are proud of today. Right. Uh, not actually honoring to God. But God has shown how many examples after example after example of the Bible that he can meet us right where we're at. And it's not our place to judge. It's our place to do the best we can to have as much compassion as he does. And that's why you were receptive, Maurice, to the word, you know, and that's why you are receptive to transforming to Shelty and, and me too. And I think all of us could say that on here, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and, I, and I think that the key is relationship. That's yeah. what we have to always remember in our mind as we walk with the Lord. It's relationship, 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 relationship. Abide, abide, abide. It's just that communion every day with God. That will dictate your steps. The Holy Spirit will dictate what you do. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we when we get in the way, that's when things start going sideways. That's why you have Jesus calling these guys hypocrites. It's yeah. like they, they want everybody to think that they're perfect and nothing could be further from the truth. Probably the biggest reason is because you tried to be legalistic. You're trying to dictate tempo as mm -hmm. opposed to letting the Holy Spirit dictate tempo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what happens, you know, mm -hmm. and, it, and, it, and we see it again. And, and I mentioned briefly before we started giving the background of this. That's why you, you, you see these preachers getting drunk with power mm -hmm. because they've gotten caught up in the, the celebratory fame aspect of who they are. Didn't even realize they were getting out there. I bet mm -hmm. you anything in the world, they never realized that they were drifting far out to sea. Never yeah. realized it. It's a it's gotta be a heady thing to have that kind of control over people. You know, talking about legalism, um, this is gonna be for everybody. I just wonder when I when I became a Christian, I was twenty one years <laughs> old. Um, so I'm a mixture of all of you. I wasn't in a gang, but I certainly uh, wasn't living a great life. <laughs> but um yeah. So when I became a Christian, boy, um, I believe the milk of the word is is basically learning how to behave. So I had to learn how to behave right. It was like having mm -hmm. a parent. I had to do this, do right. So I became very 
without use of a better word right now, legalistic in my behavior. I wanted to do yeah. these things correctly. And I really angered a lot of people that I used to, you know, hang out with my family. I gave them all Bibles. You need to know this. That became so legalistic, I think, in 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 how my behavior was. Yeah. Until time went on and my spiritual um well love love mm -hmm. kind of changed a lot you know it, I beca it became more of a loving situation and, and less unless the the doing situation mm -hmm. well you know what you, would you I, call, I was... call that an overcorrection i mean would you is that kind of oh is that how you Describe it. Yeah. So, so my background is my mother um, asked me to leave at the age of 14, which I did. And I came back for a few months and left again for good at 15 and was on my own at 15. So <laughs> with no parent, God was my first really good parent. I mean, I finally had a good wow. parent. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't, you know, doing the wrong thing. So I became hyper vigilant in my behavior and I didn't have, you know, I didn't drink. I was, you know, to the point where I didn't even go dancing anymore. And that Baptist mm. religion, that'll ruin you. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Ed, listen, that stuff, uh, I'm telling you, it, it sneaks in so subtly. I remember when my kids <laughs> were young and my mom, she said, um, let me ask you something. Do you remember you? I went, mm. oh, <laughs> yeah, mom. Thanks. <laughs> and I, it, it, it made me go, Hey, you know what? Wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> Don't forget the things you used to think. Don't mm -hmm. forget the things that attracted you, that you fell down to, you know, everybody, every kid goes through stuff, mm -hmm. I, I, period. And you have to be compassionate and patient about it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's, especially when you're operating from the word of God. What's the word? It's called grace. You don't want to be too liberal with kids. You still have to be a parent, but you you've got to have a lot of grace in doing huge that. Decisions that they shouldn't be making when they're 13 years old. You'll right, you got to have out a little bit. <laughs> to allude to what have... society is doing right now. I tell you, I, as my kids moved into that age range where the stuff really started becoming dicey, like it wasn't kid stuff, kid stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I I just thank God for the conversation I had with my mom. I was, I was so calm dealing with a lot of things. I just kept thinking about me and mm. what they need to hear based on what I was feeling when they were at that mm -hmm. age that I was at. So no, it's all about grace. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. It's about grace. And, it, and it's, it's, again, it's just relationship. I'm telling you that you, if you get away from that and the devil is so smooth with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's so yeah. smooth with it. And you just got to, I think, Michelle, you were alluding to it. It's like, you just kind of kind of get, just catch yourself. Go, whoa, 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 wait a second. Let me just get back in relationship and allow God to steer the ship because I ain't got no idea what I'm doing. Okay. I, I, I'm telling yeah. you. And uh, and that's what it comes down to. Let's, let's pick it up here in verse 27, Acts chapter 5. As I read from the NLT, then they brought the apostles before the high council where the high priest confronted them. We gave you strict orders never again to teach in this man's name, he said. Instead, you have filled all Jerusalem with your teaching about him and you want to make us responsible for his death. Now, let me just say this. Here's the reality. They are responsible for his death. Yeah, I was going to say... <laughs> it's, 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 and, and I'm not trying to throw stones here. I'm just keeping it 100. It's like Pilate trying to wash his hands off mm -hmm. of, of it all. Yeah, I wash my hands of this matter. No, it's more like, stop bringing it up. Stop bringing not, it up. It's not that easy, Pilate. Um, I wash my hands of this matter. Uh, the, the, so it, it's not that simple. You have blood on your hands. Mm -hmm. As they screamed, let his blood. What did they say, everybody? They said it. Let his blood be on us and our children. They said that. Yeah, they did. They said that. They cursed themselves. They literally did. Okay. The, the, oh, I'm not throwing stones. I'm just, just <laughs> kind of commenting off of what this priest said. Yeah. And, and, and the reality is you are responsible for his death. You, you had that man killed mm -hmm. for no reason. You did. You did. And now they're trying to deny it. They know they did it. They know they're guilty. 
if you keep talking about this name and if this thing keeps growing, we're going to be exposed for what we actually. They're so focused on defending themselves from what they did because now Jesus is a rock star. They didn't see that coming. Hey, Jesus is a rock star, man. Exactly I'll tell you thinking. right now. I just saw the Elvis movie and I was thinking, Jesus was like Elvis. <laughs> Everybody was going crazy and everybody wanted to stop it. So. Uh, yes, Kim. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, I thought he was on a tree. <laughs> okay. And There's hey, my Kim. water broken. Kim. 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 <laughs> in order to use the term rock star, you have to understand what a rock star is first, okay? In, in, a, in a manner of speaking, Jesus Kim. Jesus is a star. And in a manner rock. of speaking. Oh. But <laughs> the, 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 the reality is, they didn't see this coming. Now they have to deal with this. Mm. So mm -hmm. as a part of, you know, the fact that their their hearts are so hard, they can't even see pure power. It's like, I don't know. How do you miss this power that's ready? I mean, God's right in front of you. How do you miss that? They are also trying to run away from the responsibility of if this guy yeah. becomes what it looks like he's becoming. Hey, we 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 did this. We did this. And I think there's a little bit of guilt there. I'm not I'm not saying that they walk around feeling that way now, but the reality is they, they are responsible for his death. And I love my Jewish brethren, so I don't want anyone to ever think that I would ever throw stones at them because I'm not doing that. I love well, Reese, them. Here's the truth. Yeah. Here's the truth. We are all responsible yes. for his death. Ah, yeah. there it is, Dave. There it is. That part right there. Yes. Dave, we all are. And 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 I've said many times before, I'm not so sure. Well, no, I am sure. Probably would have done the same thing. I mean, I can't see myself doing anything differently. I mean, who 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 do I think I am? So you're right, Dave. You're right. But with as it, as the text reads, mm -hmm. they're trying to distance themselves from that responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's just the bottom line, basic of of the the text. And most people, when they're deceived they would rather dive deeper into the deception than admit mm -hmm. that they were deceived. It's yes. It's easier to continually buy into that deception and hit the brakes and turn around and say, wait a minute, I was deceived. I was wrong. My fault. Lord, forgive me. Yeah, I was I was there yelling, crucify him. Mm -hmm. But it's easier to continue to say, we crucified somebody that was a phony than to admit that you're wrong. And right. that's part of where they're at. Right. Right. A hundred percent. I, I, well, I think I the, think also, yeah. I was going to say also, um, you know, this day and age that we're reading this, these historical documents of the Bible, um, they were very uh, tuned in to spiritual matters. Yeah. And um, so so this could also be like, oh, you, you escaped prison. That must have been a magical trick. You know, like so it's not mm -hmm. just the thing. And so what I'm thinking is right here is when they're saying, you know, hey, didn't we tell you that you're not supposed to be teaching in his name? Like. Uh, we're the authority. We told you. It's, it's kind of like a parental. Um, I think they are more angry at the fact. Once again, you know, like it, if you get angry at your kids and you're starting to tell them, hey, didn't I tell you not to go out? Da, 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 and now you're doing like I think it just you just keep adding on more accusations as you're angry. And it's like, yeah, earlier, you know, they did say, oh, let the blood be upon us. And now like, hey. Now you're trying to put it up back on us, and da, 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 like it's. I think it's more of a we have the authority, you don't. We told you to do this, you're not doing it, and I think it's kind of a, from a um, a place of authority. How dare you question us? Kind of a position. So I don't. I mean, I know you're saying, Maurice, that they probably have some guilt here right now. I don't think they do, but that's my opinion. I, I'm thinking they're more on like, mm, no, you're still wrong. You're still wrong. I think it just keeps well, more I, I, fuel I, for their fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the nonsense of it all. It's like, how do you watch these guys raise a, a, a heal a man that can't walk and, you know, heal men and women of leprosy? You walk by and your shadow heals people and you walk out of a jail that's securely locked. What makes you think they're going to do anything you say? What 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 makes you think that these guys are afraid of you? <laughs> I mean, now listen, didn't we tell? So I'm like, okay, um, it just seems a little nonsensical that, that they don't get it. And I was like, are you 
are you watching these guys right now? It's like, do you really think you can control them? They're only obeying and they're being cool about it. Yeah. I wonder if any of them were related, you know, there, it was, it wasn't like there's that many people around, like some of the, some of the soldiers could say, well, God, that was my great uncle that's walking now. Crap. I, need to, I, need I to love that. Right <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was yeah, at your I, birthday, I, birthday party. You all could pretty much see it. Yeah. You know, they knew who yeah. Was yeah. For, so. it, it, it's just kind of comical that they don't get anything. They just, they're like, now, now see here. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Anyway, so I, I'll tell you what, let's, let's keep going. Uh, so I won't, so Felicia won't have any more joke material on me. <laughs> This dead gut chapter. Uh, let's see. Let's pick it up here in verses 29 here. We're still not going to make it, but we'll try. Verses 29 <laughs> through 35. But Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by hanging him on a cross. Then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand as Come prince on. and savior. He did this so the people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who obey him. When they heard this, the high council was furious and decided to kill them. Yes, yeah, sure. But one member, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, who was an expert in religious law and respected by all the people, stood up and ordered that the men be sent outside the council chamber for a while. Then he said to his colleagues, men of Israel, take care what you are planning to do to these men. Ah, finally. Well, I'm inside. What was that, Michelle? I said, slow your roll. Finally, he's like, uh, dudes, let's calm down for a minute. Let's slow our roll. Let, let's, let's. There it is. Just a moment. There it is. We didn't have right. a Zoom meeting. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, so now we have some common sense enter the picture, right? Do we have any proof? Somebody help me out, Michelle. Maybe you can help me. I don't know. This might be an, a, a question for cornbread. Do we have any proof in the annals of Christendom that Gamaliel may have been? An undercover believer. Do we have any proof of that? That is a great question. I won't know uh, the exact answer till I get to heaven. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you, you may, maybe check with cornbread on that. Uh, I'm, I'm just. I, I I just thought it was curious because you do have some people like Nicodemus and and other men like the guy uh, Joseph of Arimathea and so forth. They're like guys that are like hanging out and they're not coming forward with their actual mm -hmm. beliefs they're kind of hanging in the background and shut i didn't know if there's any historical proof that maybe this guy may have been one of those people i just thought it was curious you know because he said yeah, some pretty powerful things here you know you know who one of his uh one of his students was no paul is that right i did not yeah. know see he was, interesting he was a, he was a uh he was a moderate in his beliefs okay so, that makes sense. So anyway, no, no. Look, I don't, know, I don't know how he could be a moderate and produce Paul, but Paul was one of his his. Uh, he used to be followers. A yeah, teacher. yeah. So he, I, you know, I, I just that was like just a point of curiosity for me because yeah. this guy Gamaliel, he comes in and he he says some pretty awesome stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, he he's the only one remotely close to where everybody ought to be. So he was a teacher and everything. Maybe he was a little bit smarter than the average bear saying, look what's oh, happening, Kim, what's happening in the streets, man. If we do Kim. anything, it's going to get really bad. So let's talk about it. Zoom meeting. Kim, yeah. this dude <laughs> seems to be way ahead of everybody. Uh, this, this guy, Gamaliel, uh, is like way ahead of everybody. <laughs> uh, they do. Well, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can work through yeah. anybody in That's anything. Right. Oh. Yeah, he, he spoke through a donkey. He spoke through Gamil right here. Right? Is that how you say his name? I don't know. Um, and uh, every so often, he'll speak through me. So I'm just saying, he will work with anything on this earth that has a mouth. With anything. With anyone. Are you, are, Michelle, are you referring uh, to Gamaliel as a donkey? No, I was referring to myself as uh, I, I mean, I just as thought anything. it was. 
I was just throwing it out as just for a conversation. I just thought it was amazing that the guy just stepped up like this. I mean, I mean, and you're right. Uh, I mean, Michelle, God can speak through anybody at any point in time. And look what I happened mean, to him. He made the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he made the Bible. He made it. He made it. Um, He's in there. But to Michelle's point. I was like, point, finally, somebody. Let's put his name in there. To Michelle's point, too, oh. and, and just okay. as thinking this through, um, this was all a plan. Yeah. So everything that took place had to take place in order for us, like um, Cornbread said, like he, he, we all are the reason why he was crucified. Because mm -hmm. if I was the only person that was on this earth, he still would have died for me. So yeah. as those people were put in place as a part of the plan, certain things had to happen in order for us to get to that space. Just like at that moment, like she said, the Holy Spirit is like, wait, wait, hold up. Cause this ain't, wait a minute. Cause this ain't really yeah. what's going to happen right now. So hold on, think about it, <laughs> stop, <laughs> pay attention. Yes. Because certain things were supposed to happen a certain way in order for us to be here having these conversations right now. Yes, and she'll, yeah, that was Dave actually that made, that was the wrong cornbread, it was Dave. Oh. No, 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 it's all good, but no, Dave, and there's just corny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are yellow, Dave. You look That's funny like as heck. <laughs> okay. Um, no, but anyway, Shelty, you're correct. I mean, and, and, and Dave did say it, and we're all guilty. Yeah, we're all guilty. Bottom line. We are all guilty of, of, of the death of, of Jesus. And it's a shame the way the Jews have been treat, uh, treated throughout the annals of history, annals of history, because we're all guilty. It's not just the Jews. Everybody's guilty. Yeah, I don't know. I've never understood that. Why, 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 do we, why do people get mad and then say you killed Christ? I'm like, shouldn't that be thank you? Thank you. I mean, that's what was supposed to happen. I don't I don't I don't get that. I just would want to go thank you for because because of that, I have a relationship. Well, with it's it. The reason people do it is because it's convenient. Yeah. It's it's just convenient to blame, blame somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. I, I mean, heck, <laughs> why not just blame them? I mean, they they are the like special, so we'll just throw rocks at them. But no, I I it's unfair. Well, even going back to that other point, going, I don't want to take responsibility for my own sin. Bottom so line, blame somebody. Bottom else. line. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Let's let's keep track and we're almost done. I think I'm going to be uh, Fifi on this one. Let's keep going. Uh, <laughs> so let's pick it up here in verse uh stopped at what 35. So 36. Some time ago there was uh that fellow Thutis who pretended to be someone great. About 400 others joined him, but he was killed mm -hmm. and all his followers went their various ways. The whole movement came to nothing. After him, at the time of the census, there was Judas of Galilee. He got people to follow him, but he was killed as well. And all his followers were scattered. So my advice is leave these men alone. Let them go. If they are planning and doing these things merely on their own, it will soon be overthrown. But if it is from God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. I'll tell you right now, Michelle Van Dusen. That, was, that, that hey, Michelle Van Dusen. That was the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, Gamaliel just spoke it. That was that was a mic drop. Yeah. That that was a mic drop right there. It's like, yo, dude, if this thing is from God, you won't be able to stop it chill everybody chill and step back and let's see what happens amazing amazing Gamaliel stepped up and did something because as we sit here um well just just as we, we we sit here today Christianity is the most adhered to quote unquote religion in the world and Gamaliel's words ring true Men have found themselves fighting against God to this very day. And the last time I checked, newsflash, God.
God wins. And and that's where we are right now. People okay, are that's literally a spoiler fighting. alert right there, Maurice. Like you just spoiled <laughs> the whole ending. You know, God wins, dude. Like you just spoiled. Like, oh, I'm not no. watching this series now. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, hey, listen. <laughs> if 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 people don't realize uh, the ending of the story up to this point, see, that's the thing right there. I don't understand. Yeah. That's the part I don't understand. It's like. You see this stuff right in front of you. It's it is so obvious. Yeah, he's leaving us. You hanging. guys still there? Everybody? Yeah, still yeah, there? we're here. <laughs> what a cliffhanger! Okay. Okay. <laughs> we're fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm like. So listen, Ooh. it's so obvious <laughs> what's happening, and it's like, how do you how do you miss that? How do you miss that? You look at an atheist. I told you I had a conversation with an atheist last week. This guy wanted to get into it. I didn't want to get into it. But God put me in that position. I had to engage this guy. And he started getting angrier and angrier. And I said, hey, man, listen, we don't we don't have to keep talking about this. I mean, I don't want you to get upset. And I said something at the end, right? Because I, I really didn't. I didn't. I did, I did not want to talk because I already knew it was going to be a difficult conversation, but I stayed calm throughout it. And I, I said, listen, man, you're, you're uh, free to believe whatever you want to believe. And I'm never going to look at you any differently. I said something to that effect and it, it seemed to appease him. And mm-hmm. I thought in my mind, oh, good. We're not going to talk about this anymore. <laughs> and, and then he walked away and then he turned around as a co-worker. He walked away and then he turned around and said, but I want to ask you one more thing. <laughs> Ooh, Colombo here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he goes, he, he said, uh, I forget what the question was. And he said, I want you to think about it and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it another time. And I thought to myself, this thing won't end. But I, you know why it won't end? Because he knows that he's wrong. Mm. And he, he can't end the conversation unless he can walk away feeling that he's right. Yeah. That's why he can't stop talking about it. Like I, cause I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do it because I, I, th- because it's going to become a debate and, 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 and God, and, and God wants me to remain. Um, he wants me to remain calm. Mm-hmm. That's the only way we're going to be effective. If we allow them to take them to where they are, we've lost them. Hmm. Hmm. If and we start getting angry, my response to him was so perfect that I will, you know, accept you the way you, you know, mm-hmm. you told him is, you know, hey, and, and what I'm hearing is um, I'm going to love you anyway. You know, mm-hmm. so that, that's, yeah. and that's, that's, that's the, that's what everyone needs to hear. Mm-hmm. We, that, you know, I, I'm going to go back to my favorite Bible verse, love thy neighbors. You love yourself. You have to love yourself. We got to be good here so we can put that energy towards others because people look at us and say, what is different about you? What what's going on with you? And and I want that, you know. And that's love. Well, that that and and the bottom line is, I think that's where a lot of people are. They they know. I I just this is just my personal opinion. I I, I think they know that God exists. They don't want to admit that because they want to live life on their terms out, out of some anger unresolved differences, whatever their reason is for being so upset that they just don't want to believe in God anymore. They're probably mad at God. I don't know. But you you know what it, what, when you see God, you know that, but you make a conscious effort to say, I don't believe you anyway. What some great philosopher said, there's every evidence in the world that God is real. It is so obvious, but I choose to not believe anyway. So people know. They, they know. And you know what else they, 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 they know is that I'm not going to finish this chapter. <laughs> <laughs> PC wins again. It's unbelievable. Oh, uh, oh, it's you're so, so close. close. Like four <laughs> shows. So close. So close. Right, we we got to get out of here. But real quick, uh, Kim, what do you got going on in the comedy world uh, in the near future? 
Um, planning to put together a, a show here in San Antonio to raise money for multiple sclerosis because that's the bike team. That's why I ride my bike uh, every year. So I'll nice. be putting okay. that together here pretty soon. <laughs> awesome. Michelle, what about yourself? Uh, right now, we're still uh, recording some episodes for the Laugh Support podcast. And I have uh, some plans in the works for some shows coming up. All right. Don Davis Womack. Uh, weekly podcast, Virginia's for Laughers. Uh, every Wednesday, so today's a new episode, and then a show coming up and a barn at One Tribe Farm in Mount Sydney, Virginia, and then drum roll, Harrison Burke's project. <laughs> yes, please do it, do it, Harrison Burke, Virginia's first ever comedy music axe throwing festival. Ooh. Oh wow! <laughs> wow. Yeah, That's so that is July 15th and 16th at Melrose Civil War Caverns. We're All right. Stoked. Sounds yeah. good. Sounds good. Shell T, what you got going? Uh, to be more like you, the stage play is running <laughs> July 16th and 17th. <laughs> <laughs> ah, cool. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> um, Bay Area, Walnut Creek, California. Um, we have some uh, Mike Servin and Psalmist Rain are a part of our cameo cast. And so we're very, very excited about about that and what's going okay. on. And after that, I will be going on tour. So uh, on the comedy tour after that. So God. All right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Dave Weaver, what you got going, Dave? Uh, I got the weekly podcast, Gifts for Glory. Uh, in June, did a series of interviews with uh, former members of the LG LGBTQ community to show that Christ can transform a life. Uh, and uh, we've got uh, Wolver's Comedy coming up July 23rd in Chicagoland. Uh, and uh, possibly making a public announcement about another Wolver's franchise very soon. Okay, Dave. Great, Yay. great stuff. Christy Condor. Just working on uh, Kids Church with Miss Christy, YouTube channel. Woohoo. And uh, in a season of writing. So, writing some new stuff. So, working on that. All right, everybody. And uh, folks, if you have enjoyed our show, like it and share it and uh, subscribe to the Maurice Brown Comedy Channel, as well as any social media engine that Kim Curley and Michelle Van Dusen and Don Davis Womack and Shell T and Dave Ebert and Christy Condor are a part of. And if you came in at the very end, you're like, by gosh, I missed this dude's show again. Well, you know what? <laughs> you can watch it in its entirety on the Creative Motion Network on Roku TV. And every Saturday night at 8.30 and 12 midnight, you can watch Breaking Down the Four Walls on KCHF TV, TV 11 in Albuquerque, <laughs> New Mexico. So you don't want to miss it. Uh, there's no way you can miss it. We've made every available opportunity for you to watch the Maurice Brown Show, Breaking Down the Four Walls. Guys, this has been a great show, and we will continue... Uh, there's no way we're not going to finish next week. There's no way. I guarantee you we'll finish next week. Uh, in the meantime, you guys have a blessed week, and may the peace of Christ be with you and your families, everybody. God bless you.